Nearly 10,000 more Americans will die. 90,000 deaths and growing. Millions more will file for unemployment. Small businesses are dying. We're not testing enough. It's still spreading. Here's what else is coming this week. He will lie to you over and over. He will tweet instead of lead. He will blame others for his failures. Welcome to this week and the next week and the next and the next until you do something about it. It's the latest ad from Republican anti-Trump super PAC, which literally just recites what is expected to happen in America as the pandemic continues. And the reality of the current situation, where we find ourselves right now, it's the most brutal argument against Donald Trump politically. There have been a ton of articles over the last few weeks about how desperate Trump and the White House are to change that bedrock reality with just increasingly insane attacks and wild gambits to get attention. But the political gravity right now in the country is the incumbent president is running for re-election in the midst of the worst cataclysm to befall the country in generations. The question of the election is a referendum on the president. And more than that, a referendum on whether reality in the end, the circumstances of the country are what matter. Frontline workers, many, many are taking it. I happen to be taking it. I happen to be taking it. Hydroxychloroquine? I'm taking it. Hydroxychloroquine. When? Right now, yeah. Yeah, when? A couple of weeks ago, I started taking it. Because I think it's good. I've heard a lot of good stories. And if it's not good, I'll tell you right, I'm not going to get hurt by it. If you are in a risky population here and you are taking this as a preventative uh, treatment to, to ward off the virus or in a worst case scenario, you are dealing with the virus and you are in this vulnerable population, it will kill you. I cannot stress enough. This will kill you. As far as the president is concerned, um, the, uh, our, he's our president, and I would rather he not be taking something that has not been approved uh, by the scientist, especially in his age group and in his, shall we say, weight group, what is morbidly obese, they say. So I, I, uh, I, I think it was, it's not a good idea. Did the White House doctor recommend that you take that? Is that why you're taking it? Yeah, White House doctor. I didn't recommend. No, I asked him, what do you think? He said, well, if you'd like it. I said, yeah, I'd like it. I'd like to take it. A lot of people are taking it. A lot of frontline workers are taking hydroxychloroquine. A lot of front... I don't take it because, hey, people said, oh, maybe he owns the company. No, I don't own the company. You know what? I want the people of this nation to feel good. Just waiting to see your eyes light up when I said this, but, you know, when I announced this. But, yeah, I've taken it for about a week and a half now. And uh, I'm still here. I'm still here. Can you explain, sir, though, you, what is the evidence that it has a preventative effect? Here we go. You ready? Here's my evidence. I get a lot of positive calls about it. But I get a lot of tremendously positive news on the hydroxy. And I say, hey, you know the expression I've used, John? What do you have to lose? Okay, what do you have to lose? So you I, take have, medicine? I have been every taking day. it for about a week, week for a about a week and a half. Every day? At some point, yeah, every day. I take a pill every day. Uh, at some point, I'll stop. What I'd like to do is I'd like to have the cure and or the vaccine, and that'll happen, I think, very soon. So the White House, as usual, scrambling in behind something the president said. The White House physician, Sean Connolly, released a statement that reads, in part, after numerous discussions he and I had for and against the use of hydroxychloroquine, we concluded the potential benefit from treatment outweighed the relative risks. He added the president is in very good health and has remained symptom free. A White House official familiar with the president's decision tells NBC News President Trump started taking the drug after his valet tested positive for coronavirus earlier this month. 
White House aides were caught off guard by President Trump's decision to publicly disclose that he's been taking the drug. The White House officials said only a small group of aides knew the president was taking it. Joe, there was a but big you know, tell Willie, in there in, in the president's rambling speech about whether he was taking it, where he said, I've been waiting for your eyes to light up as he looked at members of the right. press. In other words, I knew right. this was going to be pro provocative. I knew it was going to upset mm -hmm. a lot of people. And here it is. <clears throat> yeah. And, and, and the president says, what do you have to lose? Well, your life. Yep. Uh, you, you could die from. And that's not just Fox News telling you that. That's also... Donald Trump's FDA, Donald Trump's VA, the Trump administration has said, please don't do this. It could kill you. The VA study showed that it increased the likelihood of people dying uh, if they were taking it. And, and so, again, uh, the question is, why did the president do it? Uh, we, you know, I, I think, of course, it was to distract but at the same time, people that are listening, when he asks that question, what do you have to lose? The Trump administration says, your life. A VA study showed that among a population of uh, veterans in, in a hospital receiving this treatment, those with vulnerable conditions, respiratory conditions, heart ailments, they died. There are also a number of other studies out, including the Journal of the American Medical Association, which examined some 1,438 individuals in the New York area across 25 hospitals from the middle of March to the end of March. The study was a real chance to look at the, the, the benefits that the president insisted were hydroxychloroquine. They concluded that among residents, uh, residents hospitalized in metropolitan New York with COVID-19, the treatment or both compared with neither treatment, no statistical differences. A second study done by Justin Jalaris and colleagues at the New York Presbyterian Hospital, Columbia University Irving Medical Center in Northern Manhattan from March 7th to April 8th also showed there were no visible differences, that the risk of intubation or death was not significantly higher or lower among patients who received hydroxychloroquine versus those who did not. The VA study to which the president alluded wasn't a loaded political one. It was a test on patients there and those who took it in a vulnerable population, including those with respiratory or other conditions, they died. I want to stress again, they died. If you are in a risky population here and you are taking this as a preventative uh, treatment to, to ward off the virus or in a worst case scenario you are dealing with the virus and you are in this vulnerable population, it will kill you. I cannot stress enough. This will kill you. So again, whatever benefits the president says this has and, and certainly has had for those suffering from malaria, dealing with lupus, this is a, a, a leap that, that should not be taken casually by those watching at home or assuming, well, the president of the United States says it's okay. Uh, even the FDA was very cautious about this unless in a clinical trial safely and deliberately watched. I only make this not to make a political point here, but a life and death point. Be very, very careful. I want to pursue this. Biden loves this. Biden can't go out on stage without making some horrible blunder. I mean, even from his basement, he's making awful gaffes every single day. So his campaign's thrilled that he's not going out there. And they think they're taking away Donald Trump's greatest tool, which is being able to go into an arena and fill it with 50,000 people every single time, right? So they, they will, and you watch, they'll milk it every single day between now and November 3rd. And guess what, after November 3rd, coronavirus will magically all of a sudden go away and disappear and everybody will be able to reopen. They're trying to deprive him of, of, of his, his greatest asset. So Steve Schmidt, your reaction to the president's attacks on Obama, who evidently, along with China, they're going to run against. And we might have buried the lead, the medical news from Eric Trump there, that this virus is going to fade away right after Election Day. 
Well, let's start with Eric Trump. I think, and I said it this weekend, it may well be the dumbest thing that's ever been said by a presidential offspring. We have 90,000 dead Americans, soon we'll be over 100,000. We'll be on our way to 200,000 before too much longer. And this kid thinks it's all a hoax to keep his dad from having rallies. It's just deplorable. Um, with regard with regard to the president and, and, and President Obama, we saw a scene of American weakness earlier this year where we saw many of our greatest allies. We saw the French president, the Canadian prime minister, uh, we saw the German chancellor. We saw a group of foreign leaders all together laughing about Donald Trump, laughing at the president of the United States. They weren't laughing with him. They were laughing at him. Uh, they laugh at him because they view him as a buffoon, a clown. And that didn't happen to President Obama. When, when President Obama traveled the world, he was a symbol of respect. People around the world did not laugh at Barack Obama the way they do with Donald Trump. And so we have Barack Obama who serves for eight years in office. I didn't agree with all of President Obama's agenda, but nobody was indicted in the Obama administration over eight years. So we had one of the cleanest administrations in history, followed up by one of the most corrupt in history. And we look back now at the Obama era, and I really believe this, Brian. I think it marks the ending of the 75 year long American era that began with the end of World War II and lasted until Donald Trump's presidency is till we enter this period now of precipitous national decline. And if you look back to the day where Barack Obama received Donald Trump at the White House on January 20th of 2017 for the transition of power, the place that we are at this hour, one of economic collapse, the epicenter of a global pandemic, the inability of the federal government to get the testing done, to get PPE ordered for frontline healthcare workers. We, we are at an hour of American weakness that's just simply unimaginable looking back from when Barack Obama was president a few short years ago. And so, you know, I think Donald Trump looks at Barack Obama with a lot of envy. And I think he has a lot of projection. And I think you see that playing out whenever he talks about the former president.